Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Diane. Today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of March 3rd through 9th. Today is March 9th. So this week was more of the same old, same old. Um, got a lot more things going on with work. We did go to the movies this week, so I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. I did finish one book and I'm in the middle of two. So we've got that to talk about. I have a Yarny update for you as usual. And so, yeah, let's get started. So the one book that I finished this week was Find Him Where You Left Him Dead by Kristen Simmons. This is the first book in the Death Games series, I believe. Um, I put this one on my to read list. When completely Melanie was doing her season-a-thon like winter around, um, I can't remember what she calls it, but they usually do a group read during their season-a-thon sessions. And so the group read was this book, and I thought, you know, it does sound like it's going to be my type of thing, so I went ahead and put it on my holds list for Libby. Uh, through my library and it just got released to me at the beginning of March and so I'm like you know what I'm just going to read it instead of postponing it because it does have mysterious elements to it it's more of a horror or at least the first like tag was like horror thriller and mystery was a little bit further down the line but it does sound like it was going to be mysterious and so I'm like you know I'm just going to read it for March Mystery Madness it's not going to fit the theme or any of the prompts but Maybe I'll find something in it, right? So I read it this week. I listened to part of it on audio. I read some of it from audiobook because I was able to get both of those in. And so this one is about a group of young adults. Um, they're in their like early 20s. And when they were teenagers, they had played this game called Mado. And Mado is like purgatory. Um... But the game itself is very much a Jumanji-esque style game, but it's based in Japanese uh, like folklore and like uh, myths and legends and things. And so when they played this game, um, they ended up losing one of their friends and they've kind of been haunted by the experience since. Well, fast forward a few years and now they're a bit older and they don't talk to each other anymore. So they were like the best of friends back then. And now they're like, they don't reach out anymore. They don't talk to each other. And something happens to each one of them individually that's like supernatural in nature. That kind of makes them believe that the game wants them back. And one of the things that is kind of dangling in front of them is the fact that, you know, their friend that they left in Mado is possibly still there and savable. And so the, I'm just going to say friends, <laughs> uh, get together again and play the game in hopes of trying to retrieve their friend that they thought they lost. So this one definitely started out very interesting. The experiences that each one of the friends has before they reconnect are kind of chilling, I would say. Some of them were definitely gruesome, a uh, little bit grotesque. And then when they started to play the game, um, things kind of went down the drain for me a little bit. I don't know what happened. Um, it was interesting, like, I recognized a lot of the yokai that they had mentioned, um, but, I don't know, I think I wasn't able to latch on because of the fact that I really had no interest in any of the players. I think one thing that's really become obvious to me is for me to enjoy a story, I need to be able to want something for one of the characters. Like, I have to connect to one of the characters or have to be invested in one of the characters. I don't necessarily need to connect to them, but I have to, like, want good things for that character or, or something. I need to want something <laughs> from one of the characters. And in this book, I really, like, didn't. A lot of the time as they were trying to like reconnect in order to 
you know, better their ability to play this game because with them being fractured relationships, that kind of hindered their progress with the game. So there was a lot of discourse between the characters and just, I don't know, the reveals weren't really great for me. I kind of saw one of the reveals towards the end coming for a really long time. Like it was something that kind of stuck out to me from practically the beginning when we were first introduced to this character. And so, yeah, this one didn't hit the mark for me. And as I was reading through the physical copy, so I would listen to a portion of it during my lunch break because you know I like my lunch break audiobooks. And then in the evening I would read uh, from where the audiobook stopped um, to whatever before I was like too tired to read. So I always make sure that I stopped at chapter markers, you know. So in the evening when I would pick up this book to read before I went to bed, I found myself like scanning the page instead of reading through it because it just wasn't grabbing me. So unfortunately, this one only got a three star for me. I do not believe that I will be continuing with this series. Um, I'm pretty good where the first uh, installment ended up. I'm pretty settled with that. I feel like it can be read as a one shot standalone. That's not to say that I won't be interested in picking up the next one when it comes out, but it's definitely not a high priority. I don't know that I'm comfortable saying that I'm going to like hard DNF this series, but it's not a high priority read for me. It's like I'm good where this one left. Like I said, it was a three star, was entertaining. I just don't feel like I need any more from these characters. Unless this is going to be like a spin-off series where we're going to follow other kids playing this game down the road. I think that might be interesting to see how different kids play it, their takes on things as they come across them in the game. Maybe they, they'll come across different things throughout the game. But yeah, three stars. It was entertaining. I'm glad I read it. Not sure that I'll need to continue with that one, but that's okay. So I've got my first book down for March Mystery Madness. Didn't end up hitting any of the prompts or the theme, but that's okay. It was still a mystery. It still counts. So now I am finally into some of the reads that I had planned for March Mystery Madness. So currently my kind of evening read, so my physical ebook copy read, is Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. I had put this one on my list last year because the Start and Stop Buddy Reads with Allison on a Brook Break was reading it for one of their rounds. And I thought from the synopsis that it sounded interesting. And so I put it on my hold list. And of course, that hold also just came in. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, it's a mystery. It'll fit, right? So this one follows a like the production of a TV show called Insidious. And the producer of this show has a mystery in his background. So way back when he was, I think, 10 years old, his stepfather was murdered in the garden of their home. But the case was never solved, and now it's a cold case. So now that he's producing like this TV show about cold cases, um, he brought his case to the team. So there's a team of Americans, and I think there's British... Um, like investigators, ex-police officers, uh, specialists and things like that that are on this TV show. And they kind of take a look at the evidence with kind of fresh eyes, I would say, and kind of see if they can figure out what happened with the case. So, like I said, the producer, this is personal to him. He is an adult now. He's producing this show. And so... He's very interested to find out what happened to his stepdad. And so we've got this like panel of people like looking over the evidence, doing uh, interviews, like current interviews, looking over past interviews, looking at the old, the old evidence and uncovering like more information to try to solve this case. 
So this book is told in like newspaper articles and most of it is what I would call a script for the TV show, though it wouldn't be like the normal like script that you'd see like before like a show where it has like lines that are set. This is more a transcript of what was said during the recording, but it's written like a script would. So you've got the character's name and what then they said, and then you've got the next character's name and then what they said. And so you're kind of reading different sections. So there's like a recording section and then there's the planning. And then there's the recording section and planning. So each episode has two separate sections. And then in between those sections, there's uh, like a TV article or a newspaper article about like some like critic that's like watching this TV show and giving his take on like, you know, what had happened. And there's like a forum type uh, website where you've got like other people like making comments on this forum about the episodes as they air and then um, there's some like text messages and emails between some of the people that you meet while the filming is taking place and things like that so it's very mixed media it's not something that I'm normally used to reading but the investigation into an old cold case is very interesting to me. So I thought this would definitely work well for me. So I did start reading this one. I started trying to listen to it on audio. And to be honest, the audio didn't really work out for me. The voice actors, I'm not even sure if there's multiple actors because I only listened for it, to it for one uh, lunch break because the voices bothered me that much. It made it sound very historical, even though the people that are talking are supposed to be, you know, current timeline. The voices that were used made it sound like real historic, like the people were very old. And while I think some of them are like, say, in their like maybe 60s, uh, I don't feel like the voices captured that. I feel like the voices that were used made them sound that like they were like 80 or 90 years old. And I just don't think that's the case. But anyway, this, I am about 40% through at the moment. I have stopped listening to the audiobook because the voice narrating bothered me that much and switched solely to the ebook copy. I'm at 40%. This is just kind of mediocre for me. It's not like grabbing me. While I am still interested in the outcome of what our group finds and how every episode kind of leaves on a cliffhanger, what's being said in between is not all that gripping. And truthfully, I'm not quite sure if I was actually watching this on screen, if I would be more gripped than I am. So I'm just kind of like reading along just to see what the outcome of this case is going to be. I'm not sure. It's just not, mm, it's not what I thought it was going to be. And I don't know if maybe the fact that it's laid out in this multimedia type situation where I'm reading from a script instead of a normal like book is something that's also hindering my enjoyment of this one. But so far... It's just okay. If I were to rate it right now, I'd give it three stars. Um, I am going to continue with this one because I am, like I said, interested in finding out exactly what happened because there have been some surprises. Some surprises that have surprised the producer who, like I said, this case is from his past. And so I'm very interested to see what happened. But getting there is a bit of a slog. So... I'm going to continue with this one this week as my evening read. And then because the audiobook of that book was not working for me, I decided to pick up one of the books that was on my TBR. So I have to read this book for my Rotating Dex TBR game. And it's also going to fit for the Chris's Corners uh, Phase Out Your TBR Readathon for the standalone prompt. And that is The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. So I've only listened to this one for one day so far. This story seems to be about a woman who, when she was a kid, her mother 
had housed some refugees. Um, and that's kind of shaped how she lives her life right now. She's kind of fleeing uh, where she had lived. And she's now uh, going to a new job where she's teaching at this school. And the school, I think, is kind of haunted. So where I stopped in this book... We got a second narrator, and I believe that second narrator is a ghost. And so I feel like we're going to have these two characters kind of uh, narrating from the same point in time, going through this teacher, starting her new job, and things like that. It's not too gripping for me either. I... I'm just not starting off this month real good. <laughs> now, granted that this is the selection for lowest rated. I said before in my TBR game that this was the second lowest rated book on my TBR. It's like a 2.8 or something like that. Average rating on Goodreads. I know my friend Raul over from Latin Lector enjoyed this one. He gave it four stars, but I don't know. It's really slow. It's really slow for me. I'm not sure if the audiobook for this one is going to work for me either. I may have to switch over to physical copy as well, which is fine because this one is readily available from my library and with no weights, so that's not going to be a problem, but I'm just kind of I'm kind of disappointed that my reads at the moment are just kind of middle of the road. <laughs> you know, March Mystery Madness is usually usually the month where I'm in my genre. I'm reading the things that I want to be reading but it started off not so great for me so that's kind of where I am right now with my reads I'm kind of really antsy to try to pick up something else but at the same time I don't want to do that because if I do that I'm going to have books left hanging and I just want to finish and then start and then finish and then start I don't want to be like halfway through I'm not quite sure that I've read enough to DNF. Um, well, I've read enough of Murder in the Family, but like I said, I'm not at that point where I want to DNF. I'm still very interested in what's going on. The Tenth Girl, I haven't even read like 12%, I think. I'm, I may be around there, but I don't think that's 100 pages. And so, yeah, I'm kind of feeling kind of blah about my read so far, but it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. And so I just got to hope for better reads. Maybe I'll get all of my like blase reads out of the way at the beginning of the month and then end my month on a much better note. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see what I get up to this week, but that's where I am with my reads so far. So let's get into another Yarny update. So I've got, as you can see from my thumbnail, my rainbow ring. So rainbow ring... Again, very stretchy. So stretchy. Um, I finished my first sleeve the last time I talked to you. So this week I was able to put in a little bit. So I have started my second sleeve. So my marker is actually on this side. So this is where I was before. That was where the sleeve was on its like holder. And so I've done this much. So not too much. Not too much at all. But it is progress. So, yeah, still very happy with this. This is the first sleeve, just for reference. So on the first sleeve, this is where I am on the second sleeve so far. So I would say I'm about a third of the way done with the first sleeve, I would say. Yeah. So still chugging along with this. Again, the rainbow ring is by Stephen West. All of these colors are from my Fangirl Fibers. Residents of the Haunted Mansion Yarn Advent Calendar, which was an Halloween advent, but I didn't open it up until Vlogmas. So if you're interested in seeing what all of these colorways are based on or who they're based on, um, you can watch my Vlogmas videos for those. They're always in the beginning of the episode. So if you're not interested in anything else I did in December, you can just watch the yarny openings at the beginning. But yes. Very happy with this yarn advent calendar. And so, yeah, working my way with this. 
I'm not going to say that the rainbow ring will be done by the end of March. If it is, great. If it's not, it won't be much longer than that, I don't think. But yes, very happily working along on that. And then just for a little bit of an update on the main. So this is how much I have left of my main color. This is Yarn Cafe Creations and the Biscotti Sock in the gray smoke colorway. So I think I'm probably going to have to dive into my fourth skein. Um, but I probably won't use very much. But yes, slowly working my way on that. And then, of course, I have my mom's harvest. So I've been putting in some work on this. It's been, you know, one of those projects where I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. I am knitting flat. And so it's pretty mindless um, other than when I need to change colors because I do have a little bit of intarsia on this one. So this is what it looks like so far. Again, this is the Harvest from Tin Can Knits. This is a free pattern. I am working from their app, though I'm not really referencing their app at the moment because right now I'm having no like increases or decreases or anything like that. It's just worked flat until the bottom. And so I'm just doing that right now. So I'm doing the 3X size from my mom. This ladybug uh, is a stitch mar marker from the corner of craft. Um, I want it in along with a skein of yarn from Do So Knits a couple years ago um, from one of their knit alongs. And so, yeah, corner of craft. Uh, and so this is where I was when I talked to you last week. And this is where I am right now. So from the underarm, this is how much I have. I am not quite sure yet how long the body of this cardigan needs to be. I did tell my mom to go and measure one that she already has, but she hasn't done that yet. Normally, if I'm making a sweater for myself, I do about 19 inches from the underarm. I'm not sure how long she's going to want it. I mean, similar, we have similar, like, lengths and torsos, I think. Um... So I would think 19 inches would be good, but she told me that the arm on her cardigan that she measured was about 18 and a half inches, and I normally do a 17 inch sleeve for myself. So she said 18 and a half inches was good. She liked that length, so I'm going to make the sleeve on hers 18 and a half inches, but I'm not sure about the body. So obviously these like rows are super long because it goes all the way from here around the back to the other side. So it takes me quite a while to get uh, like a repeat done because I consider repeat one knit row, one pearl row. Um, and so, yeah, it's just kind of mindless besides the change in color because I need to make sure that I lock lock those stitches so that there's no holes but yeah so far so good really enjoying this so far and i think it's looking really nice as well so yeah so far so good i really need to make one of these harvests for myself because it's a really nice um wearable cardigan i just i don't know i just never did one i did a flax i did a flax for my daughter as well but I've never done a harvest, so I think I'd really like one of these for myself also. But yes, so far so good. Really enjoying that. So that's everything I have for Yarny Update. I have been eyeing my stash um, because I really want to wind up a pair of yarn, uh, yarn sock set for the Earth Tones Girl knit along that I love books and sock knitting I can never get that read that knit along name right but it's something like that um but I just haven't done it yet because I feel like I'm working on two kind of big projects and I would really like to get at least one of them like off the needles which means the rainbow ring because that one's the closest to being done um but yeah I just really want to participate in that sock knitting uh, knit along it's 
there's no prizes or anything. It's just like to be part of the community. But I would really like to like share some manga because I don't think anybody who's shared any of their like makes and stuff have been manga related and I would really love to like just add to the conversation and you know get more people interested in reading manga but yeah so there's that I did put in an order with nitpicks this week um my daughter and I have been talking about um plans for future sweaters that she'd like me to make for her and I'm just really inspired right now for knitting, like, with all kinds of plans for sweaters and with my daughter's, like, enjoyment of the pure fuzz that I made her. She's been wearing it quite a bit. And with her enthusiasm of having a, a sweater that is meaningful to her because of the colors that she's chosen, what those colors mean for certain things... And things like that. I was just like you know what. I'm just going to go and make an order. I haven't ordered from Knit Picks in. I think it said two years. So yeah. I did put in an order with Knit Picks. So that will be coming in like a couple of weeks. I'm not in any rush for it. Um, but yeah. There's that on the way. <laughs> I will say that you know. Knit Picks is very economical. And it's not like I bought a whole sweater's quantity of hand-dyed yarn, which, you know, can be very expensive, especially for someone my size. Um, but we bought three sweaters worth. One for me and two for her. So, I mean, I couldn't let her buy yarn without adding some for myself, right? <laughs> and, and on, you know, to be fair... I was just adding additional yarn for a sweater that I'm planning on making for myself because I didn't have enough. So it's not like, you know, I ended up buying a whole new sweater's worth of yarn. It was for some to add on to something that I already had. So there's that. <laughs> But anyway, I think that's pretty much all I have for this week. As for, like, show watching and stuff, we're back to watching our usual TV shows. You know, NCIS, Law & Order, Law & Order, Organized Crime, all of those NCISs, actually, um, on all of the FBI's. Will Trent came back, so we've been watching that. Alert Missing Persons Unit came back, which I was surprised, so we watched the first episode of that. We watched the entirety of Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix. Now, I am not somebody who's watched Avatar The Last Airbender from the cartoon, but my daughter absolutely loves it. She watched it when she was growing up. She's got the discs and stuff, and I just never watched it. So we watched the live action. I really enjoyed it. She really wants to re-watch the animation, and so... I'm going to definitely carve out time to sit down and do that with her sometime soon. Um, it's going to take a while because I think there's a few seasons of that. But I'm much more interested in the show now that I've seen it in the live action than I was um, this whole time. And so, yeah, interested to start that. Uh, we finished Marry My Husband a couple weeks ago, which I didn't tell you about. Um, that's a Korean drama. Really, really enjoyable. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a Korean drama. And yeah, really, really enjoyed that show. It's a webtoon, so I really want to, like, read that. I'm kind of hoping that it gets licensed for uh, U.S. Dis distribution uh, because I'd really like to own that series, like, on paper. <laughs> um, really enjoyed that show. Really, really good. And highly recommend that one. So if you're looking for a Korean drama to watch, Marry My Husband is on Amazon Prime. And I think that's pretty much all we're watching at the moment. Um, besides our, like, true crime stuff. Uh, we've been watching the Bad Romance uh, 2020 series. Very interesting. Very interesting. And every once in a while we go back and watch an episode of Snapped, which is a true crime documentary show that Oxygen puts out. We started watching that one when we were in Hawaii a couple years ago. And so every once in a while when we don't know what to watch, we watch an episode of that. Very interesting. Uh, 
And then I told you that we went to the theater this week. We went to go see the uh, showing of Labyrinth. They're only showing it in like two days. And so we went on the first day. Very, very fun to see Labyrinth in the theater. And I really, really enjoyed it. So they are doing a whole bunch of like 80s like movies in the theater. Like, you know, certain days only type thing for the Columbia 100 anniversary. And one of the ones that they're having coming up soon is Rad. If you don't know what Rad is, it's a BMX type uh, movie about BMX racing. It's one of my brother's favorite movies when we were kids. And uh, they're showing it for one night only on what they're calling Rad Day, which is the day that it was released back in the 80s. And uh, I can't go. I'm so mad that I can't go because it is at the same time, on the same day as the Manga Club meeting. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to see Rad. But we do want to watch the next Ghostbusters film, which comes out at the end of the month. So I think we might do that. And then I saw like on the screen when right before they had the trailers that Never Ending Story is coming up as one of the movies. And so, yeah, I really need to go and find a list of all of the movies that they're bringing back for the anniversary so that I can, you know, watch things that I'm interested in watching. Um, I'm not sure that I'd go see Never Ending Story either there is one scene in that movie uh that really traumatized me when i was a kid and every time i think of that movie i think of that scene and it kind of makes me not want to watch the movie but it's the only scene in the movie that i didn't like but other than that i enjoy the never ending story so i may go watch that it's been several years since i've seen the never ending story but yeah i think that's pretty much all that we've been up to lately like i said work it's just crazy it's getting crazier um they just landed us some training on the new system that we are being told is mandatory and it's a three and a half hour training every day for a week so obviously that training takes away from time that you have to do your actual work on top of all of the other meetings that i have and things like that and so yeah it's just it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's getting to be even more than a lot. Uh, but we've only got like two or three more weeks of this, I think. So just two or three more weeks and then we'll be done. So there is, I can see the light. It's not very bright, but I can see the light. Um, and so, yeah, just one week at a time. Just one week at a time. And yeah. That's pretty much what I've been up to this week. So let me know down in the comments below what you've been up to this week. Are you participating in March Mystery Madness? If so, let me know what you've read so far or what you are currently reading for March Mystery Madness. If not, like I said before, let me know what readathons you are participating in in the month of March and what you're reading right now. I'd love to know that as well. If you're working on any type of project, please share with me what you're doing. And if you've seen any good movies lately, let me know also. And if nothing else, you'd just like to let me know that you are here. If you could leave me some kind of flower emoji down in the comments below, that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out. And that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.